What's up, YouTube gamers? Bonfire here, and welcome to another Game Site Review, where I'm bringing you a review of one of this year's biggest and most anticipated games, and that is Bioshock Infinite. So let's get to it. Bioshock Infinite was released on March 26, 2013. And this is the next Bioshock game from Ken Levine and the Irrational Games developers. This game is one of the most highly anticipated titles this year and even arguably this console generation given the success of the original Bioshock. You play as P.I. Booker DeWitt who in order to repay a gambling debt has been given the task to rescue a girl named Elizabeth in the city of Columbia. As you begin your rescue you get caught up in an uprising conflict within this utopian city in the sky. Starting with the introduction in the first 15 minutes or so, it does a great job of setting the tone of the game and creating a lot of mystery about what the game is about. It really sucks you in and is difficult to put down. I felt like this intro really pays a tribute to the first Bioshock, as there are a lot of similarities with the lighthouse, the culture and feel as you enter the city, and the entrances into the cities. I also felt like this intro wasn't as memorable as the first Bioshocks, but was still a fantastic intro into a great game. Now this introduction, just like Bioshock, leads you to the very first time you enter and see the great city of Columbia. And Columbia is beautiful. The color palette they use for it is perfect fit. It's cool to look around and see yourself in the clouds and watch the various parts of the city float around you, but be wary if you easily get motion sickness. The designers do a great job of creating a city that's alive and thriving. Which is a change from the first Bioshock where you arrived to the city after it had torn itself apart. This time, you see the city before and during its conflicts. The city is thriving and people are out and about with shops open and plenty to explore. And exploring in this game is fun and encouraged as you find voxophones, which are the audio logs, more money, and infusions which allow you to increase your stats. It's enjoyable enjoyable to find voxophones and take time to look at the little kiosks located within the game as they expand upon the story and give you some insight into Columbia and its background. You can interact with the people and they will even react to your presence and actions which I thought was an excellent and impressive touch to the game. Traveling between one floating island to the next brought on one of the most intriguing parts of this game and that is done by its skyline system. It's basically a track in which cars hang on to get you from one place to the next, but with the use of your skyhook, you can actually ride the rails and it implements a unique experience to the gameplay and combat. Hopping on and off the track is as easy as a push of a button and you can manipulate your speed and direction. It can take some time getting used to, but once you do, it's very fun and makes both the combat and exploration exciting. As far as its use in combat, it makes navigating an escape much easier and it's enjoyable to take out enemies from the skyline. Since it can give you verticality and access to areas you normally couldn't, it adds to the wonderful exploration in this game. Now onto some of the other gameplay features in combat, which there have been some unique additions. Starting with the controls, it will feel very familiar to most first person shooter players and it works for the most part. One thing that does not work well is the reload button being the same as a search button. So during combat I found myself searching through course, corpses instead of reloading which was very frustrating. Now the combat is a nice mixture of Bioshocks 1 and 2 as well as your other typical first person shooter games. You have your Vigors which are the new plasmids in one hand and in the other is your weapon. You can run, jump and duck but I only really found running to be helpful during combat and even throughout the game. Using your weapons and vigors work well and it's easy to go from one to the other. Instead of having all your weapons at your disposal, you can only carry two, but you can pick up weapons that your enemies have dropped and it allows you to use multiple weapons at just about any time. And I really liked this feature because it added a nice variety to the combat and allowed you to strategize based on your available weapons. They've also added the ability to aim down the sights, which makes it easier to take down enemies at a distance. Another new feature to the combat is the ability to melee with your skyhook, and you can do so without having to change weapons. And this was a great addition because some of the enemies will just run at you and attack you, which you can now melee and then shoot. It also really smoothed out most of the combat. 
The vigors you get within the game are quite varied and resemble many of the plasmids from the original Bioshock. However, it felt like there weren't enough of them in the game, and they weren't really all that useful, minus one which allows you to essentially stun your enemies. In intense combat scenarios, I found it easier to just shoot, stun, rinse, and repeat. So the combat can get a little bland after a while, but if you try to make use of all your vigors and weapons, it might keep things fun for you. One of the most talked about elements in this game is Elizabeth, your AI companion. And this is one of the best AI companions I've experienced in a game. She's helpful, intuitive, and doesn't get in the way at all. She will throw you ammo and health during combat sequences, and even money she finds when you two are exploring the world. And she doesn't do so in an annoying or intrusive way. She will point out items nearby that you've missed, which I found was most impressive. It's a good balance between helping you out and not overdoing it. She won't interfere with the combat situations at all, and you never have to worry about her dying or getting hurt. I found that this helped the gameplay tremendously because if you had to worry about her all the time, the entire game would have been about that, and it would have taken a lot away from the story. Now the story in this game is simply stunning. It starts off at a good pace, capturing your attention. It slows down a little bit after you've rescued Elizabeth. But then that's a little bit after that is when things start to spill out. Which all leads up to an ending that is literally jaw-dropping and will leave you speechless. Now overall, let's take a look at the positives. This is, game has an excellent intro that grabs your attention and hooks you into it. It has great weapon variety, smooth player movement with that skyline system, it is a good fusion of combat mechanics that draws from the other Bioshock games as well as other first-person shooter games. You have an incredible AI companion, and it has an amazing story with an ending that you will not want to miss. Now the negatives. The reload button is the same as the search button, which is frustrating. Combat sequences can be a little too routine and static, and I would have liked to have seen more plasmids. Overall, given its few annoyances, this is a fantastic game that every gamer should play, and it lives up to the massive hype and success of the first Bioshock. Well, there you guys have it. My review of Bioshock Infinite. I don't always like to promote games or sway you guys one way or another. I like to leave that up to you, the viewers. But with, if you like a good story, this is a must-play game for you. And I can't stress that enough. So drop a comment below, let me know what you guys think about the game, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Until next time guys, I'm Bonfire, and I'll see you online.